tonight I will be playing Rolling Realms with you guys, which is a free print and play from Jamie Stegmaier from Stonemaier Games. You might have heard of them. And if you are looking at this sheet, you will see the names of some of the games that Stonemaier has published. Some of which you probably have heard of. They have quite a few well-known titles, Wingspan obviously being their biggest hit recently. But yeah, there's a lot of games that people know from this publisher. And when the pandemic started, Jamie decided he wanted to develop a game that people could play from their home and it would also work for social distancing. So if everybody just got their own copy, you could play it over webcam or over phone. Hi Lycan. So yeah, I think that was a really neat concept. And uh, in case you hadn't noticed, this is version 10 by now. So it has been updated quite a bit over the past month and had a quite a bit of input from fans and all that. And I, th I think I've played all the versions since version 5 and they're all really enjoyable, honestly. And they've just been tweaked for balance and stuff like that. I only have a PDF sheet, I don't have a direct picture, so it's hard to link that. But you can also play along digitally, so I'm going to link you there. But it's a free print and play, so if you prefer having a PDF or printing it out yourself, you can get it from the publisher's website or from BoardGameGeek, whatever you prefer. Hi Dean! So this is actually like nine little mini games and you will play them over three rounds and each round you will focus on three of those nine realms. And we will randomly determine which ones. I have a randomizer outside of your outside of the screen, so I've actually randomized what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna use this one for number one and this one and this one. So if you want to play along live, please make sure to mark Tapestry, Wingspan and My Little Side as number one on your sheet. Okay, and every round will take nine turns and play is completely simultaneous. So you can play this solo or you can play this with as many people as you would like. And the rules remain exactly the same, everybody plays on their own sheet. Each round we will roll two dice, you can write those numbers down here. And then we will use those dice in these realms that we're using the current round. And you have to pick a different realm for each die unless otherwise stated. So if I roll the three and a four, then I can say I want to use the three here and the four here, or the three here and the four there, etc. I'll warn you through what each realm does when we get to them. So for now, I'm going to explain these three. This one says the die number determines what kind of shape you're placing. And you can rotate that if you want. You can't put a you can't put a shape on one of these spots, they're blocked spots, you have to work around them. If you complete one of these sections, you get a bonus, you will circle that over here. And if you complete a row or a column, you will be able to get points at the end of the game. You can see what whichever you filled up most, the rows or the columns, but each row or column will be one point. So either the rows or the columns, whichever one got highest and obviously if you manage to fill it up completely you get a maximum number of points. You can use each shape as many times as you want so if you roll a 5 now you can still use another 5 in a future turn in this round to place that shape again. You don't have to use all of the different ones before you can reuse one. That would make that awfully hard. Then we have wingspan and in wingspan there are three birds and you're trying to make them particular sizes. So if you have these three spots filled up, you want that to be seven. This one needs to be 12 and this one needs to be 16. You can work on the birds in a random order. So you can do one square here and then two here and then go back there. That's all fine. As long as within each bird you work from left to right. If you fill up all squares in a bird, you get a victory point. Even if the number is wrong and if the number matches, so if you tally up these squares, that's the total, then you get another point. So you would get two points for filling it up and having the number correct. And if the number, the total is wrong, then you only get one point for it. And then we have my little side. You mark off a hex, either one, so if you roll a tree, you can say this tree or this one. And then again, you get a resource. Same here, by the way, if you write down a number, you get resources. So you circle the resources. And then you, at the end of the game, you check how many pump, or at the end of this round, sorry, not the end of the game. So at the end of these nine turns and end of round one, you check if you've had circled at least seven pumpkins. If so, you get a point. If you have at least seven hearts, you get a point. And you check where these overlap. So if I have both of the twos, that's one pair. That also gets me a point. 
you can never earn more than six stars in a realm. So even if you mark this off completely and you also have seven hearts and seven pumpkins, you still only get six points. You don't get eight, you guys. There is a limit to this. So that's how that works. And then at the end of every turn or during a turn even, you can decide to use your resources to adjust the dice. Pumpkins are used to make your die go plus or minus one. Two to go plus or minus one and three to go plus or minus one and put it in a realm you've already used. So if you want to put two numbers in the same realm in one round, three pumpkins is one way to accomplish that. Then we have the hearts. If the dice both have the same number, you can use two hearts to reuse one again. So then you have the same number three times. But remember the basic rule is only one die per realm per turn. So you would have to spread them out across the realms. For three hearts, you can also reuse a die even if they aren't both the same number. Then we have two gold. If the dice add up to seven, like this example, then you get to reuse one. Same rules, still can't use one in the same realm. And then you pay any number of gold to gain an imaginary die of a particular number. And you can mix and match those. You can say, I want to reuse a number three and then pay two pumpkins and pretend it's a two. So you, re re you reuse dice as they were originally rolled, but I think you're allowed to then spend pumpkins to adjust it. And if you had adjusted the original one, so I've, I've adjusted this one and placed a two and a four, and then I say I want to reuse something, I do have to reuse it as the original number, not the adjusted number. So you can't spend two pumpkins to adjust something and then use the adjusted number multiple times. You have to pay that cost every time. And that would be the rules. So let's give it a go. Well, at least the rules for this round. So we rolled a two twice. So I write down two little tiny twos, which is really hard to write in these tiny squares. You can also just cross them off and look at the dice if you prefer. And then you can place one number two in here and one number or one in each. So you have three options and you place one in one spot and one in another spot. What would I like? I think putting a two in here is fine. I'm going to put a two over there and circle a pumpkin straight away. And then for the other two, hmm, what do I want to go? Let's go somewhere here. I'm always kind of trying to think where I could maybe place a really big one because it's a nice easy way to fill it up. I could place that here. I'm going to go for the bottom two squares here because number two says this is the shape I'm supposed to place. And that will be the end of my first turn. So I place one in this realm and one in this realm. And if you are playing along live and you're not able to keep up with me, feel free to shout and I will play more slowly. And of course, if you write down the numbers, you're also free to just play along at your own pace. Hi Odin, nice to see you again. I know, right? It's a really nice concept. It's been designed by Jamie at the start of quarantine. And there's actually been another designer that did like his own spin-off with his own games. It's really enjoyable. I think it's a really nice concept. I would love to do something like this for like my top nine games at some point. I think that'd be interesting. It's definitely a really awesome concept. And I like showcasing some free print and play games that people can do from their home, especially like this one that works social distant where everybody just can play their own sheet and it doesn't matter if you can't see what other people are doing as long as somebody just calls out the die numbers. Alright, playing. Five is quite a big shape, so I would like to put that one up here. One, two, three, four, five. That means I've completed this little one, so I get another pumpkin. And I have another five. I will not place it here because then I will lose out on the bonus point for getting the right number. So I can place it here or here. And remember within one particular bird you have to go left to right. You can't just start with the square that gives you the victory point. And the other option is marking one up here and then getting another resource. I like having three pumpkins in case I want to use two dice in one roam at some point. So I think I'm going to go for the pumpkin over here. Plus, as long as I have seven pumpkins at the end, I get a point for this universe. So it would be a nice move either way. Turn number three. By the way, if you're just playing this by yourself, you know the rules. It goes much quicker. But I tend to explain why I'm doing stuff in case you're not playing along live and you're just watching to learn the game. And obviously, I'm also explaining what everything does in between rounds. So yeah, it will be a little slower. Don't think this is the usual playtime.
So we have a 2 or a 4 which could go in here. I'm not sure I really feel the need to do that quite yet. I mean it's possible but eh. And then I, I might want to put a 2 in here. I think that I'm okay with that. I'm going to put a 2 in here. And then I have a 4 to either go in there or in there. You know what? I'm going to do the 4 in here after all. And that completes both of these sections. So I get another gold and another heart. If I want, I could spend one or two gold to create an imaginary die of number one or two that would have to go in a realm I haven't used yet this turn, so that would have to go in here. I don't think that's particularly interesting at this point, so I'm gonna pause on that. And then I'm rolling again. Three and five. Oh, by the way, Odin, I got a request if I can do Dust and Void again at some point. And someone actually bought the series based off my earlier live streams and recommendations. So, yay! And I printed the, new, the bigger Dust and Void sheet in a full page size today. And I laminated it so I can do another stream of that somewhere in the next week or two. A three and a five. Hmm, what would I like? I mean, a 5 is still nice, but at this point I don't think there's a really great place to place that anymore. I think I'm better off placing stuff up here. The 3 should just go here, you guys, because that makes 7. So that means I get 1 victory point for this and 1 victory point because the number matches. You can also just mark those at the end. It's whatever you prefer, really. But in this case, I just tend to do it as I go. And then I have a 5 left. I already have this 5, so I'm going to put that here and then I get a heart. And... It was a really crooked circle. And also, because these two now match, I have a pair, so I will also have a victory point for that at the end. And with this realm, I am going to mark them at the end, because I know I will get, I will mess it up if I try to do that along the way. But this one I find easy to do without messing up. Personal preference, really. The dice did not show a pair, so I can't use the two hearts to reuse one. I don't have three hearts yet. If you do, you could reuse one if you wanted. Again, I could do another one or two and put that somewhere, but I'm not really interested in that yet, so I'm just going to roll the next turn. Two and three. Low numbers. It's going to be hard to fill this up if I keep rolling numbers that are this low. Let's see, let's put the tree up here and get another heart. And the hearts and pumpkins help with this one, so I'm prioritizing those over the gold coins a bit right now. And then I have a 2 left, which really isn't great to put in one of these if I actually want to make the number. But at this point I might just want to go for just filling it up and get 1 star instead of 2. I can also put it here. I think I might like putting it there, honestly. I'm going to put the 2 in here. And then I get another heart. And if I want I can use 3 dice to reuse something. I think I'm okay with it. I do think I really want to fill up my sheet a little more. If you reuse something, unless you use 3 pumpkins to tweak it and... Use the, you may use it in a realm you've already used this turn ability. Unless you do that, you can't put it in the same realm. So while I'm reusing this number 3, I need to put it somewhere I haven't used yet. So I've put a 2 in here, a 3 in here, which means I have this realm left. So I'm going to place number 3 in this realm. I think I'm going to put it in here. Even though it gets me a cold coin, I would like this. I would like the heart more, but... This one will be easier to get to 12, so I'm going to opt for this. I'm holding, I'm hearing a hold on already. Let me know when I can continue rolling. In the meantime, I'll just ramble a bit about how this works. So yeah, we're about halfway through the first round right now. And it's, I can tell you right now, I think it's pretty much impossible to get like the full star count everywhere. So don't expect that. If you have any resources you haven't used at the end of the round, they will become 0 0.1 point. So they will be a tenth of a point, basically. They do not carry over into the next round. And Lycan is done, so we're going to roll the next turn. Two numbers, two. That's a pair, so that means we could use two hearts to reuse a two. And then basically we have a two to put in every realm. I'm definitely going to put a two in here and get a pumpkin. And that gets me another pair, so it will be points again at the end of this round. So that would be great. And then we have another two to put somewhere over here. And honestly, I'm not really happy with that. I don't feel like I really needed another two. 
I might, I really do want to fill this one up more and I feel like it's becoming more and more difficult. I just need a single six here, which would really help a lot. You know what? I'm going to put a two in here and I'm going to use quite a few resources possibly. Wait, no, I don't have more hearts. I would need more hearts to do that. Hmm. I was going to actually copy it to... Oh, I can make an imaginary too. I was going to say I'm making a two and copy it to put something bigger in here, but I can do that. I'm going to make an imaginary number one. And then spend three pumpkins to adjust that to a two. And it allows me to put it in a realm I've already used this turn. So I can put another two in here. And it leaves me with a shape to put a six and then some other stuff to fill up here. Hopefully that will help along help this along a bit even if i just get this number six that'd be nice and filling this up gets me a new pumpkin which means i have two pumpkins again i like pumpkins also improves my chances of getting a six later on and that would be it for this round if you do ever run into questions by the way jamie keeps a really nice frequently asked questions thing in the dropbox including all of the old versions and a way to randomize the realms from different versions if you want to combine those and also, yay, high numbers, finally. So the six is going to go in here. I thought I decided that quite a while ago. That fills up this area, so I get another gold coin. And then I have a six left, which I would prefer to put in here, I think. And it's nine out of twelve already, so it's nice. And that means I only need another three. And I do have three gold coins, so in the next turn I can put those three gold coins... Uh, to create an imaginary tree and put that here and complete that one. I think that'd be great. I can't do that now because we're using dice and extra dice had to be used in a realm you hadn't already used unless you triggered a pumpkin ability. So can't do it yet, but on my next turn I could do that. These do not show a pair, so I can't reuse any and I don't have anything that will really let me reuse something another way. So next turn, a one and a six. Hmm, tough choices, you guys. I can't fit another six in here. I could fit another one in here, but in there potentially. I think I'm gonna do that. I do another one that completes another column and that gets me another pumpkin, which helps score this one at the end. And then I have two, four, six pumpkins. And if I have seven, I will score a victory point at the end for this realm. So it seems like a good choice to do that. So I'm gonna put the six in here and get that seventh pumpkin out. And I could for two coins reuse one of these dice because the sum is seven. But I think I would prefer to use these three to create an imaginary number three and put it here. And get two more victory points for this realm. I only have one more turn so this one is never going to get completed. But four out of six seems alright. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to roll again. Another one and six. Well, I wasn't counting on that, really. I was hoping for other numbers to maybe fill this one up, but... Nope, not gonna happen then. I would like a fifth one up here, though. So I think I'm gonna adjust this one to a two so that I can put it here. And then I have five out of six columns, which wouldn't be half bad. And another six can go here. That gets me another heart, which doesn't get me seven so that's a little unfortunate but it does get me another pair so it gets me points for having another pair so that looks great and then the one was going to be adjusted into a number two. Oh, i can get another heart i'll get to that anyway putting this one adjusting it to number two that only takes two pumpkins not three because i hadn't put anything in this realm yet so i don't need a third and now I let's see what I have left. I have three hearts. And for three hearts I can reuse a die. I'm going to do that. And then it doesn't really matter if I reuse the one or the six. Because it has to go in here. But doing putting any of the numbers in here would get me another heart. And then I'm up to seven here as well. I'm not sure if dice are up. I was wondering about that myself. Let me check that real quick. Underneath the digital version, there's a link to the frequently asked questions and all the other stuff. So I can probably look that up while I tally points. I looked that up quite a while ago, but it hasn't come up for my own games in quite a few games. And at this point, I honestly forgot again. 
Sorry about that. I knew there was something I wanted to check before I started today's live stream, and now that you ask me this, I remember what it was. But I didn't when I actually want to look something up, so I didn't before. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, that is not the frequently asked questions button. Where did I put my frequently asked questions button? You know, it would be really helpful asking me this half an hour before my live stream. Okay, I found the frequently asked questions page. Regarding pumpkins. <laughs> it says you can't adjust something zero and not two zero. I knew that. It does not wrap. I assume that's not the answer you were hoping for. Otherwise you wouldn't ask. <laughs> but no, they don't. Sorry about that. Let me count my points. So I can either count rows or columns. I have five columns out of six. So that's obviously what I'm going to be scoring. I can mark this prettier than I'm actually marking it. But you would have. So that's five. This was four. Now we can check this one. I have seven pumpkins. So that's a point. I have seven hearts. So that's a point. Because it only says earned. It doesn't say you need those that many left. Because that would be pretty impossible, guys. Saving up that many and not using them is really wasteful. And then we check every pair. I have a pair of twos, so that's a point. I have a pair of fives, so that's a point. And I have a pair of six, and that's a point. By the way, this is a really high scoring round. This is not how it usually goes. So I have a total of 14 right now. Point three, because I have three resources left. So 14.3 is my total for the current round. And then we're randomizing what realms we're using for the second round. I am going to say we are doing this one, this one, and this one. So between two cities, site and viticulture. Please mark those with a number two for round number two. And remember the resources do not carry over. That's why you got a 0 0.1 point for each of them. And I'll now explain what each of these do. In between two cities, you can put any number you want as long as the same ones don't touch each other orthogonally. So diagonally, you can have the same number, but not directly next to one another. If you fill up a row or a column, you get some resources, which is nice. And this one scores a little funnily. You get points. The You get points equal to the worst of the other two realms. So you will look at how many points you scored here and how many points you scored here. And the lowest of the two will be your points for between two cities. There's one more requirement for that. You need to fill at least that many spaces in here. Otherwise you can just put both of these at six and ignore this entirely and get six points. That would be too easy. So it says the number of victory points you get needs to at least equal the number of filled squares here. If the number of filled squares is lower, then your points get lower. So only fill three squares here. Even if both of these score more than three points, I would only get three points for between two cities. Then we have site. You can pick when you roll something. So if I rolled a 1 or a 6, I can say I cross off this one or I cross off this one. I get a resource. And then without needing the second number, I can spend the resource to get a star. So I can say this, I get a coin. And if I spent a heart that I would have had to earn another way, I can also get the star. If I don't have that heart right now, then I don't get to score the point. But then later on, if I roll number 5, I can go, oh, I'm gaining this star and spending a gold. Or I can say I'm picking the bottom row. That's why there's also a number in the bottom row. So you don't need the bottom row when you're marking the top row. And you can spend the bottom row resource to get the point without needing this die. But if you miss out on it when marking the top row, you can later use that bottom number and spend the resource to gain the point anyway. It will take more turns, so it's definitely less efficient. But it would be allowed and it would be possible. And we have fighty culture. You can either circle something and gain a resource or you can use one of the dice with as many of the circled ones you need to get a total of 10 11 or 12 and then you would cross actually cross them off so they've been spent and that is how you fill some wine orders and get some points for that is that clear how these three work because if so we're gonna roll for the first turn I'm going to start rolling anyway, and if you guys, in case you guys are typing a question in the meantime, I'll of course answer that before the first turn is done. We're starting with a 2 and a 3. And remember the basic rules are that you need to put a different die in each realm. And I've seen people mess it up that they thought they needed both of the numbers in order to do something here. That's not the case. 
So that's why I spent quite a bit of time running over that one and I hope that was clear enough. All right, a two and a three. Mm, let's see, can I combine them nicely? I don't think so. Because if I get a two here, I get a heart. And if I get a three, I need a coin. That's not going to happen. And here I get a coin. And if I mark a two, I need a pumpkin. So that's also not very useful. So I think I'm going to leave this be for now. And definitely circle something here. The higher number seems like it would be easiest to get to 10, 11, or 12. And sometimes prefer people go for the lower number because they prefer the bonus. That's kind of up to you. But I'm going to go for this. And circle this. And then the number two is going to go in here. I am partial to pumpkins, as you probably already realized by now. So I'm going to put that somewhere here, probably. Mm, do I like the coin or the heart better? I think I'm going to go here. All right. So I use both of my numbers in two different realms. And that will be the first turn in the current round. I should move this up a bit so you guys can see it better. Yeah, I mostly like the pumpkins when you get three of them so that you can reuse it in a realm you've already used that turn. That can make life a lot easier. One and three. Alright, well if I'm putting a one here I need a heart. If I'm putting a three here I need a gold. I do have a gold now so this would be a good option. I think I like that option. Let's go for that. So I'm gonna go here. I mark off the tree. I get a pumpkin. And then if I have the resource in the bottom row, I can just spend that, which I do. So I mark off this and I get this point. You can only get the point once, obviously, so I can't later on have a two, spend another gold and trigger this again. I don't need to mark this off because I, I think I don't need to actually mark this off. Oh, it does say to mark it and gain a star. Okay, so we do mark it off. Even though I didn't have the die number, I did pay the cost and I was allowed to do that because I selected the matching square. And then we have a number one left. I think it's nice that this just fits on one sheet of paper and basically all the rules you'll need are also here. And if you do have questions about the rules, there's a really good frequently asked questions page in the folder that has all of the PDFs from all of the earlier versions as well. So that's nice. Number one goes either here or here. Having a little bit of variety might be nice, even though I really like the pumpkin. So I think having this one right now might be slightly smarter. I should put that here and not here yet. Because you can't have the same number adjacent, directly adjacent to each other. So if I put this here, then I, if I had another two, I would be able to pick this spot. If I put a number one here, then neither the one or the two can be in the middle. So this improves my chances of completing it quicker. And that would be the second turn. Rolling again. One and five. What would I like with that? I think I might want to put a 5 in here. The higher numbers are nice to put in here, I feel. Also, this is mean. I can't put a 1 in there and I would have liked to finish that. But I'm going to put a 1 in here because there already can't be a 1 in this square anyway. So that doesn't block anything else. I don't want to do it here because I don't have the heart yet. And the 5 is going to go here and I'm going to get a pumpkin. If one of these dies together with this tree would have added up to one of this, I would have been able to do that. But obviously 3 plus a maximum of 6 on a die will not be able to get you 10 or more. So I do need to circle more of these if I'm ever going to get any of the orders done. So let's go for that. And then we're rolling again. 4 and 6. Hmm, what would I like? Four with a pumpkin, well I have those, so that seems like a good bet. So I'm gonna do the four up here, get a gold coin, and then spend a pumpkin to get another victory point. I like how all of them really play quite differently, and if you get different combos, if you play it again and you randomize and, you, and different realms work together, that can play out quite differently because some need resources and some gain your resources. So that the getting different combos can make your game either easier or harder, I feel. Plus, obviously, dice are fickle beings and they don't always agree with you either. So that was my number four spent and now I have a number six. I'm just gonna cross off this one and get the 11. I could have also circled the six now and given myself more options for later on. But I'm greedy and I want it now. I want it all and I want it now, guys, like the Queen song. Alright, so that's 11. And you can't do both. You can't circle it and then cross it off. You have to say I'm spending one of the dice and crossing off something I've already circled. At least one of these. And then getting to the right total to get points. 
Okay, I think that's it. That's it then for this round. Let's roll again. Also, I'm really short on resources, especially compared to last round. I should probably get some up here. A three and a six. Well, okay. Apparently the six is going here now anyway. That's nice. And then I have a number three left. I can't put that here anymore. I think you are allowed to go for the bottom row without the top row. Yeah, you do. So I can just say I go here and I would spend a heart if I had any. But I still don't. So let's go get some. I'm going to put the remaining number, which is three, in here. That completes this. So I get a pumpkin and a heart. That makes this one easier to do. All right, so right now I have four spots filled here, which means I could earn up to four points in the Between Two Cities realm, provided both of these also score at least four. So I can leave this a bit alone a bit, unless I really need more resources. But for now, these two are more my priority than this one. But if I don't roll nice numbers for Viticulture, then I can still put numbers in here and get some resources that way. It's interesting playoff. Double one, really? Well, that's not going to be a wine order, you guys. Certainly not, but it does get me stuff here. So one gets me another gold and I spent a heart, which I finally have to get another point in here. So that's one number one used. And I have another number one, which is still not allowed to go adjacently. I can put it either here or here. I don't have hearts anymore. So let's go for this one. And then I would be able to create an imaginary one or two and circle something up here if I want. Imaginary one might work because I don't have I don't have a need for two gold anyway at the moment, so I'm gonna do one and it has to go in the realm I haven't used yet, so that has to be here because I've used this one and this one already. Unless I also want to throw three pumpkins at it to disregard that. But then I also have to change the number. You can't pay three pumpkins simply to get the you may use it in a realm you've already used ability. You do need to do both, so both adjust it and then you can do that. Anyway, circling the one I've just imaginarily created and I'm getting a heart, which means I have one of each type that I can use there next round. So it should get me out of a tough, out of a potentially tough spot. And then I'm rolling. A four and a six. And yeah, I definitely think with this one, you don't get resources as quickly. So it's less likely with this combination to really adjust, uh, to reuse dice by spending a whole bunch of stuff. But for now, I'm not unhappy with how this is going. All right. What would I like to do? I can do this and get 10 or I can do 12. 10 seems easier to get than 12. So, but if I put the six here and the four there, then I would be able to get another point here because I do have the heart for that. So that's kind of the tougher choice for me. If I get a 10 now, I need 12 and I only have four left well four plus six is never gonna amount to 12 so that makes this one a lot harder and trickier then again i don't need, always need to max everything i'm gonna go for this i'm gonna put the six here gain another pumpkin and then uh with a heart i am going to get this victory point as well and then i have number four plus number six becomes a 10 and i get two more points there we go I think that's all right. I'm quite okay with that. Do I want to spend this one and put an imaginary one here? I think I do. And then when I put any number here that isn't a one, I get both these and these resources. So that seems pretty okay. Because that's the realm I hadn't used as this round, so that's allowed. And then I'm rolling another four and six, really. A lot of four. It's like the third four, six combo we've had this round. Alrighty then. Well, that's going to be a 4 up here then, so maybe I can get to the 12. I can't use a 4 or a 6 at the top row here. I could use it at the bottom row. And then I just spent resources, so I don't gain anything. So it's less ideal, but it's allowed. And if you're, after you've done the bottom one, you can still do the top one later, simply to gain the resource if you really wanted to. It's not really interesting, but it's allowed. I'm going to put a 4 here. Circle a gold coin. And I can do this and spend a pumpkin because I have a whole lot of those. I can also just put it here and then get a whole bunch of stuff. I think I like that better. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a six in here. And then I get two gold plus another gold and a heart. So I get a total of one heart and one 
to three gold. I haven't reused this realm yet, so I could spend some of this to create an imaginary die. So I'm gonna spend two of those to create an imaginary two. Get another heart and then spend another pumpkin to get another victory point. So this way I did, it, I did basically the same thing as just marking this bottom one. But I gained a heart and I spent some coins but I also gained a whole bunch of stuff. So I definitely think this was more efficient. I'm happy with this choice. And then that's it. I can't do anything else. Because reusing a die would need three hearts plus I've used all of the realms. So it would need three hearts and three pumpkins basically if I wanted to do anything else this round. Which would be awfully expensive and I'm not that rich guys. The final turn for this round gets a 2 and a 6. And I would really like to have this one, so let's start by looking at that. You need 12 exactly, so that might be hard. Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, nope, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 10, 11, nope, also not gonna work. What do I need? I think I need a 5. I can adjust this into a 5, obviously. That wouldn't be a bad plan. I would also really like a 4 to get the last one up here, but that's just being greedy, you guys. I think it's better to tweak this into a 5. And then 5 plus 4 is 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, that would work. So I'm spending 2 pumpkins to adjust this into a 5. And then with both of these I get 12 and I get the re last remaining victory points for this one. And I have a number 2 left. And ideally I would like to tweak that into a 4, but that's not going to happen. Oh, actually, maybe it is. No, I think I'm short one heart to do that. Sad. So I'm going to put a 2 in here. Gain 2 more pumpkins. And now I have to treat pumpkins to go make something plus or minus 1 and use it in a realm. You've already used this turn, but it doesn't get me to 4. It would get this one to 5 though, so... Oh man, that would do. But I can't reuse it. I've used both of these, so I would need to reuse it. In order to reuse it, I need 3 hearts. And I have 2 of them, so I'm one heart short in order to do that. And while I would get a heart by marking off a 5, I obviously can't spend a heart before I've earned it. So I don't have that yet. I would only have the third heart after I turn it into a 5. And I don't, so that would be it then. I do, however, have 7 resources left over, so that's nice. So this is 6, this is 5. This would be the lowest one, so that means this one is also 5. And yeah, I know, right? I'm also 1 heart short, otherwise it would have been perfect. So close. So this is 5, it means 10, 16, 16.7, because I have 7 resources left. This is looking into becoming a really high scoring game, and I hope I didn't just jinx all of us and get the worst scoring round ever for the third round, but we'll see. We have Euphoria between two castles and Charterstone left. I really like this game, by the way. I also quite like Wingspan. There's quite a few on here that I like. There's also some I haven't really played yet, but yeah. Stonemire makes good games, you guys. Anyway, trees. So we have Euphoria first. And you can mark one of the numbers. And if you roll the double, so if we have two twos or two sixes or whatever, you can mark both of them at once if you prefer. But then you've used both of the dice. So you can't use one elsewhere again. So one or two, depending on if it's a pair or not. And then you look at the total that you've crossed off in one area. So if, I've, if I have a tree now, I get a coin. And then if I... Cross of a 5 later, 3 plus 5 is 8, so I would get a victory point. So every time you mark off a square, you tally it again and you get something. And obviously if you get points, mark those off right away. Because you wouldn't be able to tell at the end of the round. Then we have between two castles. And you can pick if you want to fill it up like this or like this. And obviously if you want to fill up this one, you already need the one below it. Filling up columns gets you resources. Filling up rows gets you points. So obviously this one is... Nice and easy, and then you have to kind of pick if you and if you're going here, that's also easy. And after that, you kind of have to pick what you want to prioritize, really. Just putting something here doesn't get your resources anytime soon, but immediately gets you a victory point. So that's a really quick way of getting a victory point. So kind of have to balance that a bit. And then we have this one, and you can pick one of the dice and cross it off and then get a pumpkin and then the other number gets written here. It's not used, but it's written down. So if I mark off a two, then I would write a six in here. The other option I have is picking one of the dice and then marking all the crates that have that number written in them. So if I manage to put a whole bunch of sixes here and I roll another six, I can cross them all off and get a whole bunch of points. And that would be it for this round. So 
let's give that a go and of course as always if you have questions let me know but i think the more realms you play in this the more it kind of clicks because it's only a few new rules at a time and you've got hopefully gotten the hang of most of it by now we're starting off with a three and a five i have no idea what i want to prioritize this around how about that Um, let's see, five, and with some of the lower numbers later, I would be able to get something. I think I'm gonna do that for the points. I'm gonna put a five here. And then that is one point. And I have a three left to put here or here. Mm. Oh, by the way, if you place numbers on top of each other, the higher number must go lower. So it goes from higher to lower. Usually when you would think if you're building up top it would go higher, but no, they go lower. So the bottom row has to be the highest numbers. So putting a high num so putting a low number at the bottom would make things a little tricky in one of these, but I can put a low number here because nothing needs to go above that. That would be a nice way to do it. I can also start filling some of this up, but I'm gonna start with this one for now and get a pumpkin. And that's the end of turn one. I have another three and a five. Dice, are you broken? <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna put a five here. So I'm getting a gold coin for that. And then the other number is a three, so I have to mark that here, but it doesn't spend the number three. And then I can put the number three either here or there. Mm. Or, yeah. I suppose I can put it here, but... That's okay, that would put me at 8 and then I can still go 9 or 10 after that. Sure, why not? 3. And it's another point. Alright. A four and a five. Slightly different, at least. By the way, having the whole... I really wish I would have ended on the three here. Now I got on a five here, because then I would have gone four and five. And now I can't. But having some here might be nice, because these have to go up top. I'm going to put this here. It's an easy victory point, plus it's the longest column. And if I want to put lower numbers here, then you obviously want a high number all the way down. And we have a four. I don't want to put that here. I'm going to put a 4 on that side and get a point up here. This one is going kind of quickly right now, but I don't, really don't have a whole bunch of resources, so that's not great. Oh, by the way, if I spent this one on imaginary one, I could cross off this, and then I would have to can kind of pick which of the two dice I would put in here, if that's going to be a 4 or a 5. But I'm hoping for more trees, so I'm not going to do that yet. Seriously, more 5s? Well, guys, I clearly made the wrong call here. I should have done 3-5, and in the last round I could have done 4-5, and now I would have had 6-5. Woe is me. I hope one of you guys did that. Then you would have a whole bunch of points. Also, I really don't want these high numbers, because it's way easy to overshoot here for the points. So, I'm not really happy with that either. Oh, well. Let's see. What am I doing here? I'm putting a 5 here. I wanted to put another number here, that's not allowed. That's not even a little bit allowed. And if I'm putting one here, yeah, I do kind of have to put a 5 here, because otherwise a 5 has to go there and it's not allowed. So, okay, 5 goes here then. And 6 goes here, which I'm not too happy about, but also really don't want to put it up there. So, ah, like and make a smarter call. Not that we would have known that up front, but oh well. So this is a point already, and this is a point already, so at least that's also coming along nicely. This can be a really tough one to score, by the way. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if it does end up being a lower scoring round. Seriously? Again with the high numbers? I need more resources for this. Really? Oh man, also it means I have to put a high number here. Even if I don't want to. I can't get any pumpkins before that to fix it. Oh, 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 I can make me... I, I, hmm, I wonder if I can... Like, it create an imaginary die before I've spent my two basic ones. Because if so, I can just create an imaginary one or two using in this realm. And then I can't legally place one of these two. Because you can't reuse a realm you've used before. 
Oh, that would be a nice workaround. Let me check if that's allowed. Look, guys, we have found a wishful thinking question. Although in this case, it might not be too wishful thinking. I think it might actually be allowed. Which would be nice. Uh, let's see. I know, right? I found a loophole. Or at least I hope I did. That would be really helpful with the dice we're getting this round. Because this is really crappy. You can create and use an imaginary die after, before or in between using the two dice you've rolled. Woohoo, it's allowed! We found a loophole! Yay! Great. Love it. Beautiful. Alright, let's go for that then. I'm putting a six here. And then I'm creating an imaginary one or two and putting that in here. I'm just going to do one because why would you spend more resources if you don't need to? And then that's eight, nine, so that's another point. In that realm up there. And, I, and now I'm fine. This one, is at, this one isn't going to score any more points. So right now I can use a high number up here to get some resources. So Okay, so that's uh, use one of my numbers. And now I would have the 5, but I can't place a 5 in here. I've already used this realm. And I've already used this realm. So I'm ignoring this one. Very happy. I'm very happy to do that, by the way. Double 4. Hey, look, it's new numbers. They exist. Not that that's much better though, because if I put a 4 here, I get even more different numbers here. And this is never going to score. But if I leave them blank, they're also never going to score. So, I like the game. I hate the realm, this this game. I really do. Okay, would I like hearts or pumpkins better? If I do get two hearts, I would get to reuse the die. But then it goes in there, and I kind of already figured out I don't want that. So, that doesn't seem like a good plan. I'm putting a 4 in here, and I now either get a pumpkin or a heart. I'm going to get a... Uh, actually, I'm going to get a pumpkin, but I'm not going to use it yet. Okay, I'm going to get a pumpkin. And then I'm putting a 4 in here and also getting two hearts. And that will give me a little bit of everything so I have a little bit more wiggle room in the next round. Oh man, I don't have too long to turn this into points now, do I? It's troublesome. And I only have three points up here as well. This is really not going great. See, I told you I would jinx us all. 1 and 5. Well, that one's going to go here for another 5. And hopefully I'll at least get to score some of that. Also, I think it's nice if you can put really low numbers here. But we got really high numbers that's early on. But if you get really low numbers, then at the end you can just spend like 1 or 2 gold to cross them all off and get a whole bunch of points. So that would be my preferred way of going about this. But you know, they're dice. They're not agreeing with me. I only have two more points to score here, so I could put a 5 in here and get another point. I can also put a 5 here and get more points. That would be nice too. Let's just go for that right now. Wait, I should probably put it here so I can put a low number there later. Because I have two more rounds and I would be able to score two more points here. I think it's better to put it here now. I might regret this. We'll see. Oh, I'm going to put an imaginary 1 there. That's kind of okay. I'm spending a gold and putting an imaginary 1 here. Which puts a total at 5. Which also scores me a point up here. That looks okay. A 2 and a 4. That's not the numbers I need to make this score. It's really not. That's really unfortunate. And let's see. What do I need here? We're at 6... So seven, eight, nine. Either one of this will. This is. This would be ten. So either one of this will work. I still have a two, so I'm probably gonna put a two here then. There we go. I'm putting a two up here. That gets me the last point here, and then we're putting a four here, I think, or here. Yeah, I want it all. Oh, I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna put a four here, and no, that doesn't score me points next round. But it does give me stuff that I can work with. I think that might be a good idea anyway. Alright, and I would be able to reuse stuff. Now hopefully next round I can manage to work some stuff. I can also reuse something now, but it just gets me more different numbers here, which probably wouldn't be too great. Mm. Oh, I know what I'm doing, I think. It's a, it's a long shot, but I'm going to give that a go. I'm going to spend the three dice to reuse the number two. And then two pumpkins to turn it into... Oh no, I want to adjust this one. I think I'm allowed to do that. Let me check. 
I want to be reused to two and then adjust this one into a five so that the five gets written down here. I hope that's allowed. I'm doing so many wishful thinking questions today. And that's Charterstone, so I can look at the frequently asked questions for starters for Charterstone. No, the rolled die cannot be adjusted for putting something in a crate. Aww. Well, that doesn't work. Then, then I don't want to use my hearts yet, and I'm saving them. Mean. Okay. A three and a four. Slightly better. I mean, I can put a four here and a three here, and then uh, use the thing to adjust to mark that off. That would work. I think that's about the only option I've really got here. This one is maxed out, so I can basically ignore it. I can get resources there, but I don't think that's going to do me much good. So, yeah, not great. I can get two points here. I can also get another two points here. So, same difference, really, if I'm honest. Uh, let's see, number four. Uh, no, that's not true. Number three, I said. And which one of these? This doesn't get me bonuses. I'm going to go here, obviously. So three gets me two more pumpkins. And the number four gets marked here. And then I put a number three here. And I want to mark one of these off. So I'm going to... I have a total of seven, which would be two gold. But I don't have that. It's not a pair. So I need three hearts to reuse one of the dice. And then I can just reuse a number three. And mark off both of these. Oh, I do need to make... Oh, that's not true. That's not true. That's not legal. Because I've already used this realm, so I have to do that differently. I'm spending three hearts to reuse number four. I'm spending three pumpkins to adjust that into a five. So plus or minus one and use it in a realm I've already used. So then it's a five and I can mark off both of these and get two points. That's not great, but it's the best I can do. Fair enough, like, and you're right about that. Okay, let me, let me count this up. So this is one, two, three rows, four rows. I would have hoped five. I really should have put this one there. But then again, I really needed that heart. So I think I made the right call there, even though I lost out on a point. And I've done something in this realm this round. So I can, while I'm allowed to create an imaginary one, it won't gain me anything. So one, two, three, four then. So sad. That's really not a great score. So that is six, ten, twelve. Point three. I actually don't think that's that horrible. As you see, other ones were so high that now this looks all sad. And let's see, one point three, thirteen. I think that gives me forty-three point three if I did my math correctly. Well, this was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. You can see it's a little bit of a longer game, but if you're not explaining stuff and rambling and narrating all your moves, I can tell you it. You can definitely play this in half an hour as well. So that can definitely be quicker. Tomorrow I will be back with another free print and play called 30 Rails, which some people call like the prequel of Railroad Inc. But it definitely plays differently. And I personally found it quite a bit more brain burning, but also really interesting. So I've only played it once so far myself, which was quite a while back. So I look forward to giving that another go. It's going to be at 10 p.m. same time today's stream started, which is almost an hour ago at this point. And then I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing on Thursday and Friday. But I will be streaming at the same time. I just have to pick the games I'm doing. And yeah, agreed. I, I looked into that. I didn't actually use the online version yet. But I looked at it and I did see that it was very convenient. So, and this game is pretty addictive. So yeah, that's a nice way to play some more of that if you want. And you don't want to print off something. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, feel free to share your sheet with me and your scores. And and like and just barely beat me. Well, not even barely. You beat me with over half a point. So anyway, congrats there. And yeah, feel free to send me your sheet either by email if you're not using social media. Or if you're on Instagram or on Facebook, you can also upload it there and tag me. I'm called Nona Knows Games on there as well. I had a blast, you guys. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.